here's your wrestling news for May 18th, 2021. And your headlines for today include, Bobby Lashley gets a shocker on Raw's main event. What's next for Kofi Kingston? WWE could be setting up women's hair versus hair match. Charlotte Flair has multiple wardrobe malfunctions during WWE Raw. WWE is all set to push a new talent on Raw. Adam Pearce and several others can't stop from making zombie jokes after WrestleMania backlash. Asuka remains in the hunt for Raw Women's Gold. WWE gearing up to introduce new entrance sets for television shows. Roman Reigns doesn't want Jimmy Uso to call or text him anymore. Cesaro's injury status following WWE WrestleMania backlash and more. We're kicking off today with the almighty WWE Champion Bobby Lashley, who arrived to Raw with several women on his arm and an open challenge offered by MVP. When Drew McIntyre's music hit, MVP clarified that the open challenge was for anyone except for McIntyre or Braun Strowman, and though some names teased answering, it was Kofi Kingston who stepped up in this non-title match. The unquestionable star of Raw, Kofi not only defeated his old rival Randy Orton, but he also pinned the WWE Champion in the short but effective main event thanks to a distraction from Drew McIntyre who thwarted MVP from hitting Kingston with his cane. Though WWE presented this as a fluke win, it's worth noting that this was the first time Lashley has been pinned in four months, and it's the first time the Almighty and Kofi have faced in singles action. So what does this mean? Well, it's clear that McIntyre will be facing Lashley soon, presumably at Hell in a Cell, but we're curious what part Kingston will have to play. As of this writing, it's hard to say, but Kofi could end up being a roadblock for Lashley on the road to Hell in a Cell 2021. At WrestleMania Backlash, SmackDown Women's Champion Bianca Belair marked her first title defense by defeating Bayley, but didn't do it clean. Instead, the EST of WWE used her ponytail to help her get the win, a move that infuriated Bayley, and now the pair may be set for a rematch with even higher stakes. During Wrestling Observer Live, Brian Alvarez commented on the current SmackDown women's title picture, saying, Bianca beat her using her hair. The finish was botched, but you got the idea. I don't know if this is going to lead to a hair versus hair match, but I have a feeling that Bailey is going to put her hair on the line against the ponytail and probably get shaved bald. That would be my guess. Last year, WWE wanted to book Mandy Rose versus Sonya Deville in a hair versus hair match, but those plans were nixed when Deville's legal representative said it would be bad for her to show up to the court proceedings against her attempted kidnapper with a freshly shaved dome. Now, WWE could be circling back around to that idea, and whilst Bayley dramatically changed her character and look in 2019 following her heel turn, the role model could be sporting a much different look very soon. Raw news next is Charlotte Flair made headlines during WrestleMania Backlash with her Cruella de Vil-inspired attire, but the next night, that same outfit made headlines for a very different reason. During her Raw match with Asuka, Flair struggled to stay in her top, and WWE had to black out the screen multiple times during the match. Flair's performance in the match was strangely off compared to her usual skills, as in one instance, she completely missed a top rope move to Asuka, crashing into the ring below, and what we're calling the nobody's home in the pool. Ringside News reports that when the Queen had Asuka in a Boston Crab, that move led to one of the several wardrobe malfunctions during the match. This isn't the first time Flair has had a wardrobe malfunction, but it's rare for them to happen several times in one match, and luckily for her, the person with the sensor button was quick to react. No actual slippage made it to the live broadcast, but that doesn't mean it wasn't a close call. More from Raw as Damian Priest picked up another Lumberjack match win last night, this time against John Morrison, and thankfully, not a reanimated zombie in sight. Although the match dragged a bit longer than expected, it was an entertaining clash with legitimate lumberjacks at ringside and served its purpose, giving Priest the win over the former ECW World Champion. Though several WWE superstars surrounded the ring, The Miz was notably absent, as the Wrestling Observer reports that the A-lister suffered a knee injury at WrestleMania Backlash, though it isn't serious. Winning an absolutely chaotic match, Priest revealed post-match that he's done with The Miz and Morrison, much to the relief of the WWE Universe. Priest also teased answering Bobby Lashley's open challenge, and whilst he didn't, it's impressive that the newcomer could be seen as a genuine threat to the WWE Champion. 
Priest is moving on from this Sunday's Zombie Lumberjack match, but many fans aren't so ready to forgive WWE for this booking. Many fans were quick to criticize WWE for this spot, which was promoting Batista's new film Army of the Dead, and the animal has encouraged fans angry at him to direct their feelings to Vince McMahon. Adam Pearce is seeing the funnier side of things, as when he tweeted about the reasoning behind booking zombies for a wrestling show, he described it as a no-brainer. The self-proclaimed scrap daddy had one more dad joke in him, as he said that those zombies were dying to get into the Thunderdome. Bad puns aside, many fans are still mad at WWE for using zombies on the show, and we imagine WWE will wait quite some time to bust out the undead on a pay-per-view again. The use of zombies at WrestleMania Backlash hasn't gone down well with fans, and it seems to have irked AEW wrestler Chris Jericho, too. On Twitter, after Backlash aired, Jericho questioned why WWE would use zombies and said the match had set wrestling back 30 years. This line is a reference to an anonymous source in WWE who claimed the same thing after AEW's recent Blood and Guts match, which ended with Jericho selling a fall into cardboard after being flung from the top of the cage. This is hardly the first time AEW have poked fun at WWE, and it won't be the last, as the former AEW world champion clearly feels WWE crossed a line with their zombies in May. WrestleMania Backlash also saw Asuka get pinned in the Raw Women's title triple threat, indicating that her time in the title picture is over, and that belief was only strengthened when on Raw, Charlotte Flair confronted Sonya Deville and Adam Pearce, and it seemed like a singles program was in the works. Despite Charlotte's harsh words, Pierce said she wouldn't be getting a rematch just because she wasn't pinned on Sunday, and instead set a singles rematch between Flair and Asuka. Though fans expected Charlotte to beat the wildly talented Japanese star again, it was Asuka who got the win with a roll-up, much like Kofi Kingston earlier that night. We are glad that WWE is choosing to not push Asuka down the pecking order following her pinfall loss at Backlash, and this week's Raw made it clear that the Red Brand's women's division will be centered around these three, at least until Becky Lynch returns. As to when that'll be is unclear, but for now, Asuka isn't out of the Raw women's title picture yet. With that said, Flair remains more prominently featured than the Empress, and we expect that the Queen of All Eras will be getting a singles match against Rhea Ripley sooner rather than later. In late 2019, both Raw and SmackDown got brand new stages, which have seen hundreds of superstars make their way to the ring. In August 2020, those sets were replaced with WWE's Thunderdome, but as the company works towards going back to the way things were, there could be more changes coming to the main roster. Andrew Zarian of the Mat Men podcast, who has broken several scoops so far this year, said on social media that things are getting set for a refresh soon, and later confirmed that new sets are coming for the main roster. It's hard to say when these new sets will be used, but we imagine the WWE could mark the return to normalcy with some brand new stages for both brands. After WrestleMania 37 saw the return of a live crowd, the Thunderdome just isn't cutting it anymore, and we have to imagine that these new stages will be coming within the next few months. Back to WrestleMania Backlash, which saw Roman Reigns' incredible Universal title reign continue with a successful title defense over Cesaro. Going into the match, the big question was how would Jimmy Uso be a factor, as the recently returned former tag champion has refused to align himself with the Tribal Chief despite the pleas of his brother Jay. Jimmy even refused to attack Cesaro on last week's SmackDown and only joined the brawl to aid his brother, and this hasn't gone down well with Roman Reigns. In a statement on Twitter, Reigns said that the apparent disrespect shown by Jimmy only motivated him in the match with Cesaro, adding, Jimmy, Jim, don't text me, don't call me, don't FaceTime me, don't tell your brother to text me, don't hit me up on the group chat, we're going to have a talk about this one, but we're going to do it on my show, Friday night, my Smackdown. It'll be interesting to see what Reigns has in store for his defiant cousin this Friday, as the head of the table looks to the future for his next challenger. And we're ending today with Cesaro, who didn't do the swing at all on Roman Reigns during their Universal title match, and was seen holding his arm at several points throughout the match. Though it was speculated that Cesaro may have hurt himself during a fall to the floor early in the match, that isn't the case, as when Ringside News asked, it was revealed that Cesaro isn't injured at all. What fans thought was an injury was actually just some top-quality selling by Cesaro, who impressed in his first singles match for the Universal title, but ultimately came up short. 
During Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer discussed the Universal title match, saying, that finish was not a finish to build a rematch whatsoever. It seems Cesaro's time in the main event is over, at least for the time being, as despite all his new power, he wasn't the one to topple the Tribal Chief. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.